is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the very fun episode here live at the Disc Golf Expo presented by Ben Kenny and Paragon Disc Golf. But here we are with Staggered Stance. We are bringing everyone here a live interactive show, but then we are also going to have an interview with Jonathan Poole, one of the leading directors of the USDGC. One of. Let's give it all the, the, yeah. the leading the director, director of the USDGC. And we're going to have an awesome interview with him for a little bit. But right now, gentlemen, here we are at the Northeast Disc Golf Expo. And I'll say it first. I am absolutely blown away by how much really goes into this and how many people actually showed up for this. It's incredible. I'm looking at him for our audio listeners. He's sitting right between all of us. And by the way, all five of us are here today in person. This is a first ever for this group. So thank you guys for joining in on this. Uh, the history of our show is about, this is our fifth year running. And if you've ever heard of it before, it was the Nick and Matt show. And what started out as two guys just talking, sitting at a desk together, which was fine, turned into five hosts later and uh, hundreds of incredible, not because of us interviews, but because of our guests, the interviews that we get are really insightful. So we're glad that each of you are here. Um, we have recently rebranded to Stagger Stance, so that's what we have behind us, and that's what we're going to keep going with, and we, we've appreciated all the positive feedback. Josh, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Uh, it's snowy outside in New England, and we've got people from all over the country here, so it's funny seeing the different faces. You've got some are like, yeah, it's snowing a little bit, and then some people are panicked if they're going to be stuck here for you know two or three more days. But uh, the expo has been awesome, and I know we glossed over it, but again, if, if Ben looks like glossy eyed or uh, yesterday I said, Ben, I would see him and Ben, you would either, you would oscillate between euphoria and panic like all day. And I couldn't tell where you were on the spectrum. <laughs> yeah. But uh, again, congrats on an awesome Thank expo. You. It's fun for Thank us you. to be here. Tell, tell us a little bit about that, Ben, because two minutes before I tried to shake your hand and you didn't even recognize I was there before the doors open. What was the feeling like leading up to? And then what was it like yesterday and today? Leading up to the expo, I guess we can go like... A month before, it was just like, all right, I have an expo going on. I can't wait to, for this to be over. Um, I, I, I've had a lot of work put into this, and I'm so stressed about it. And, like, I just don't want to be stressed anymore. Day of, um, there's at least... I don't know. Was it, how many people do you think were in that line right in the You're beginning? asking me? I don't know. You don't know? I think at least 500. I was going to ask you. So, wrapped around, and that caused a state of tunnel vision. I didn't even know what was going on. It was just, I just was trying to scan people in. People were saying like, hi, and I, I didn't even recognize faces. I was just in a state of panic, as Josh was saying. But then I think I, I managed it well enough to get everyone who prepaid in. And then the euphoria really set in like four hours after once I got, you know, everyone was kind of in the expo. And that was when, um, I guess, I got to just kind of like sit down and see what was going on. And then my phone broke, uh, so I couldn't post on social media. So it's been a great show. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's now I'm in a state of calmness because, you know, it's manageable now. Last, yesterday, I need more staff. It's very apparent. So uh, <laughs> we've got someone in this room who we're going to interview in a little while, uh, Jonathan yes. Poole, who has done some big events. Maybe we'll get some information that will help. Yeah, people want to be Paul McBeth and Tom Lazat. I want to be Nate Heinold and Jonathan Poole. <laughs> there you go. That's awesome. I appreciate that. Um, I want to go over to Evan. Evan is recently um, transitioned with Statman, though, and PDGA now. And he is here with, yeah, he's wearing all the gear for our audio listeners. He's got both represented. Yep. A uh, crucial and awesome part of our show for so many years. We're still excited to have him. If you thought he was leaving, you're wrong. He's going to bring some cool stuff for us today. How's it going, Evan? It's going great. I wasn't here yesterday, uh, but here today and seeing what everybody in disc golf, at least in the Northeast, and, and then some traveling up here, it is, it is cool to see. And we got a, a ton of people listen to us live, which is, that's new because it's either me in my office by myself videoing in, uh, or it's us all in Matt's basement, uh, which is <laughs> a crowd of zero. So this is cool. So thanks, uh, thanks all who are in here uh, for showing up to listen to us live. And thanks to everyone who's watching us after the fact on YouTube uh, or audio uh, platform. Yeah, this is crazy. This is the first time, this is history, that we've ever done an in-person live. Besides, like, we've had, like, big shows in my studio with, like, touring pros. But, like, this is the biggest in-person live, and so that's really cool for us. Um, our first ever live streaming episode had maybe 70. Uh, I don't... 
20 or 30 in here right now for our, our live listeners. This is really cool. We're going to do interaction here with you guys in just a second. Um, but that's really uh, our intro. Nick, you kind of started out. You already said a little bit about yours, but give a quick update as Simon Lazat walks in the room. Where are you working now? I am working down in Brooksville, Florida. I work at the Olympus Disc Golf Course, the new course that is actually on the Pro Tour now. We are hosting the All-Star event and then the Chess.com Invitational. And uh, I'm rooting for my boy, Simon. Is there, and maybe we'll be able to get a few words from him at some point throughout this show if he's still sticking around. Is there an exclusive, I've been hearing behind the, the door, like talk about what's happening. Is there anything we can't say? Big stuff's coming for chess.com. Yeah, there's one really big thing that I'm you not allowed say. to say okay. yet. Right. But Sorry, there are some Sorry. Really cool I don't things. know what's yeah. good to share and what's not, but <laughs> be excited for the sport and chess.com invitational. That's massive. That's really cool. All right. Without further ado, and we've never done this this way, all this is new for us today, but we have a segment that we've run since like episode 10, somewhere in there, somewhere in there called Judge That Disc Golfer. And we would love to do it with someone in here today. And we're assuming that all of you are disc golfers at some level. So anybody that wants to participate, we need one person. That we don't know. Yeah, we, well, it, it, true. It's better if we don't know <laughs> you or played with you, but we could try it. I mean, if Simon played, we might still get him wrong. Um, but so go ahead, everyone point to who you want to show up and be a part of this point. Okay. We got the front row. Anybody else? I already know someone, who. someone raise your hand. Someone raise right. your hand. People are pointing fingers at each other. Oh, in the back row, he pointed at himself and he said, yeah, come on up. All right. Yeah. No, and then, yeah, yeah but, then you, but then you agreed. So, <laughs> and you said, yeah, I'll, that'd be great. All right. Yes. So come on down. We got a seat down here next to Josh, newest member of the show. Which, by the way, you add a new member to your show, and they're the most liked for at least a little while. And that's the, all the love he's getting today. Uh, so we appreciate that love for Josh. He is contributing. I've been replaced. Listen, the reason I joined the show, right, is I was an avid listener for years, every single episode. But I always disagreed with something that was said on the show. <laughs> and I'd be yelling out loud to myself while listening on the podcast. And I'm like, can I please join and so far i've been nice but soon i'll start disagreeing yeah. with everything you all say right says, now everyone yeah. loves you he says he would yell and then he would text me oh well, yeah, he thought, would get the text i, I have some after. thoughts to share on that and i was like we'll bring you on sometime so okay um i'm gonna test this microphone out we got a lot of microphones going here go ahead and uh, tell us your name oh let me unmute you real quick no oh, this is the do to do do to do everyone okay go ahead and introduce merch. yourself by uh, name jim asm from milford mass Okay. Awesome. Welcome, Jim. Jim, welcome to Staggered Stance. Are you a first-time viewer, a long-time listener, or neither? Um, I started viewing you guys probably the last few months. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. awesome. And from the technical side, if you don't mind getting that mic real close. Sure. That's, oh, there we go. Great. Perfect. Uh, I'm always trying to make sure our product's good going out. So, Jim was your name? Yes. Okay. And you just started listening a few months ago. Do you watch or do you listen? I, I watch on YouTube. Okay. Are you a live viewer or are you post like at some point, whenever it works? Uh, live, a little bit of both. Okay. Very cool. Well, like say hi next time, Jim, and we'll, we'll say hi back. Okay. Say, yeah. We've judged that guy before is what we're going to say. Wow, he's Jim. literally on the show. I mean, come on. Jim, I have a question for you. Who's your favorite member of Stagger Stance? <laughs> ben Kenny. Yes! No! <laughs> 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 That's a plant. I know it. <laughs> yeah. You're not a vendor, hey, are you? Here's the, here's the money I've paid you to say that. No. Um, Perfect. Okay. So you, how well do you know Jim, Ben? I know he throws thumbers only. All right. Well, we won't ask that Ooh, question. Right. That's good insight, that is though. insight. That is insight. Okay. So I, I'll give that to y'all. Or overhands, <laughs> I should say. Okay. Uh, have you ever seen this segment before, Jim? Yes. Okay. So here we go. Um, without telling us too much about yourself, how long have you been playing disc golf? Um, competitively, uh, about three, four years. Overall, eight. Okay, three or four years competitively. Are you a PDGA member? Yes. Uh, give us your PDGA rating, if you have one. I'm assuming eight, you do. You've 894. 894. And also, um, what division do you normally play in? MA50 or 55. Or MA40s also, but mostly MA50. Okay, MA50. And what's your best finish at an event? Do you recall, like, your most successful event? Um, I think it was Welcome to the Jungle. Okay. And MA50? MA50, yes. And what was your finish? Uh, 
first, but as far as you're talking about, as far as average. First, no, first is great. First is good. And, and, and that's it. Was that a B tier? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Was that a um, B tier? An A tier or B tier? It's a B tier. A tier this year. A tier this year. So you you won a B tier in MA50. Yes. Do you remember the field set? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's probably. I don't say this. That, that event. First. I, that event actually. That, is, it does not matter. For so, our, the, well, this is, this is the newest last year. I've won a few of them, but oh, oh. 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 I, actually, I, actually won, I actually won it the first year I played in 2016, also. But that wow. was when it was all at Cogs, and now it's at Meadowbrook and Cogs. So this was last year that I've. Okay, a few more questions to get to know you before we start judging. Well, we're judging you right now. We're just not saying it out loud. Um, is your PDGA number, you said you competed, maybe started competing a few years ago, three years ago. Is your PDGA number higher than 100,000 or less than 100,000? Higher. Higher than 100,000. Okay. So that gives us a little bit more information. Um, you play tournaments. You told us your best finish. Uh, let's get a little bit more. On average round, do you usually shoot under par? Average round, pick your favorite course or any courses. Like, you shoot under par usually. Probably closer to par. Closer to par. You had to lean which way. Which way are you leaning? Uh, above par. Okay, but close to par. Same. <laughs> Same. Um, two more. Do you have a favorite disc golf professional? Yes. Uh, who is that? Simon Lazat. Oh. Whoa. Dang. Ooh. He paid him too. <laughs> he, to our listening, to our listening and viewing audience, he said that with Simon about twenty-five feet away from. Him. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And then um, finally, what's a hobby besides disc golf that you enjoy? Like, what do we need to know about you besides disc golf? Um, I throw darts. Like, I'm in a league. I'm in the. I was going to say, like actual, like We've actual been, darts. Actually, darts. Yes. All right. You might describe a good putter that way. Actually, that like he throws darts. Like, I don't know. Okay. So don't give me the the number yet. If you've seen this segment, you're going to hold this one back for yourself while we consider the options. But I'm going to ask you the question so you can think about it. Uh, have you ever measured your distance of your throws? You can answer that. Yes? yes. Okay. How did you measure it? On uh, U-Disc. Okay. Using U-Disc. Here's the question. How far can you throw a disc? And this is up to you to interpret what that means. But we're just simply asking the question, how far can you throw a disc? And now hold that to yourself. We're going to take it down the panel here. Everyone has an idea about this. Josh, what do you think? MA50 wins yeah, often. Yeah, but multiple wins... Jim, I'm about to judge you. <laughs> no, you have already. I'm uh, I'm sitting close. I'm trying to figure out like the physique. Like, are the arms long? <laughs> he, the he reaches over and feels his arm. <laughs> no, no, no touching. Just, feel, just feel looking. No, no, that'd be cheating, and they'd give me a hard time for that. Uh, three thirty-five. I'm not tilting my hat. Evan, you're sitting out on this. No, oh, I'll, I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead. Uh, well, Ben gave us some insight earlier that. Uh, thumbers or overhands only. I'm going to guess that you're like clinical and precision, but the distance, I'm going to go under Josh. I'll give it like 10 extra feet. If I'm going to say 325. Yeah. So wow. We're going to dial it. Leading. We're dialing yeah. real tight here. I'm going to go 275, but just clean and accurate. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, go ahead. I've seen Jim's son play. <laughs> so That says anything about Jim's game. Yeah, so that's what I'm trying to like, you know, like far, like son. I'd say 300. Man, you just gave me, I was going to go 305, but that's uh, way too well, tight think, of a window. Think about just overhead. Who said the 270 like something? Looping. You said two set what? I'm going to go, go with 336. Get the one up on Josh. This is hard. I, I feel like I, like I want to go over everybody and say, what's, what was the highest 330? 335. And I'm going to take the over, and I'm not going to do the next number. I'll do 400. That's pretty close. I'm uh, 340. 340. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, oh, Just oh, over. Okay. I, I said the four number. I meant 340. So now, now no change in your mind now. You had it locked in. Here's why I did this. It, he said you disc. And I was like, ah, we'll see. All right. Well, how far can you throw it? Us, Jim. So in a consistent manner? Uh, no, this is your... We're not. You know, nope. Whatever this is up to you him. think, how far can you throw? This is whatever your you interpret decision. That as, how you answer it. You take it. No, 
<laughs> this is how you answer it. If yeah. someone says, how far can you throw a disc? What do you There's say? a lot of pressure. If someone says, I, I'm going to so, say consistently, I'm going to throw... 250 to 275. Oh, oh, let's get that. That's for Benny. Oh, that's, that's for me. You. That's Nick. Oh, man. All right. So that's the actual answer. We but I'm curious. What would be your max <laughs> distance non consistent The max distance I've ever thrown, and I'm not yeah, sure on the whole. So this is at um, Webster, hole 18. So I'm not sure on the distance, but I threw it where I was eight feet from the back. So I think that was, I, I want to say that hole is like 345. Oh, see, I gave you the max. I but that's, max. that's right. with, with a thumber, you're getting that extra skip or you're getting a nice roll at the end. That's what the aerobic so epic. You're getting that 30, that's, that's 30 that to throw. 60 foot roll or you're getting a nice 40 foot skip every time you're throwing it or most of the time. All right, well, Nick's got a point. And, and for the record, after Nick gets the point, he says, oh, I played nine holes with Jim. Oh. So, <laughs> I, Insider we'll, we'll info. That was when he was an angry thrower. <laughs> Insider All right. Info. Uh, this is, that's great. That's fantastic. So if your average disc golf round was described, Jim, by using the names of candy, which would it be? And we're going to give you a selection of options here, and we got to try to decide which one you choose. The candy options for your describing your last or oh, sorry, your average round of disc golf. So think of your your average round. Are you going to say that your hot tamales, Rocky Road, Laffy Taffy, Mister Good Bar, or Payday? Mister Good Bar. Oh, oh. <laughs> we all get a point. <laughs> oh, we forgot, okay. tell, we forgot to tell you don't answer. That. That's okay. All right, next one. How many of next you one. immediately were saying Mister Good Bar? Oh, yeah, no. yeah, we all were going to say that. I was going Laffy Taffy as well. Oh. Okay. You were Mr. Bar Mr. Good Bar? Uh, well, I mean, when he wins as many tournaments as he does, there was no other option. That's okay. I know, it's hard. I'm asking you a question in front of everybody, and you just want to answer. I get it. That's fair. This is new to everybody. Um, let's ask this but By one. the way, that's a, good, that's a good candy bar to be. I like, that's like Mr. Good Bar. It takes a lot to answer payday. Like, I'm the man. I'm getting... All right. If you were ready to hit the tour, yeah. <laughs> If you were ready to hit the tour, what brand would you choose as your main sponsor? The mon this is the definition here. The monetary value of these sponsorships is the same across all. Of they'll pay for your entry fees and off the travel. It's equal minus the brand. Are you going to choose Nike, McDonald's, Red Bull, or Planet Fitness? All right. We're going to cycle here. Did you come up with an answer? Okay. He's... That was quick. I love that. It tells me a little bit about him. Evan, what do you think he's choosing as his main sponsor? Ooh. I'm a little stumped here. I'm going to go Nike, though. I just feel like that's a safe one. Mickey D's. <laughs> McDonald's. <laughs> Nicky D's. What are you trying to say? Uh, Who doesn't love McDonald's? Get it for free? Perfect. True. This is tough. Yeah. You know him a little bit. I, yeah. Does he go to Planet Fitness? You don't know that much. No. Okay. You look, the look at him. <laughs> I don't know. You you got a clean shirt, Disc Golf 978. Our presenting sponsor of Staggered Stance. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, Nike. I'm going to go Nike. Oh, it always runs to me, and I haven't decided. I'm going to switch on everybody. I'm, I'm not convinced he's going to say Red Bull. Did he bring that Diet Coke over, or was that yours, Josh? I'm not, I'm not saying. saying. Does anybody know? I, don't know. I know, and I'm also that's not Josh's. saying. That's Josh's. Josh's. That's Josh's. Josh's. Oh, that's right. That's Josh's. He's Diet, answer. man. All right, because that We're was going to tell me I was wrong. Uh, Nike. I changed. I'm not going Red Bull. Red Bull. Oh. All right. Josh said Red Bull. All right. Go ahead, Jim. Now you can answer. Although I've had Red Bull. Uh-oh. Occasionally have. It would be Nike. Yeah. yeah. Let's go. Keep track of your points, everybody. Oh, Not McDonald's. Uh, that's only a point I got for me. One. Matt, Ben, and myself got the Nike one. Nick got the distance, and that's two questions that we've answered. So yeah. we yes. all have one. We're Josh, all tied at one. one. Josh, how many do you have? <laughs> oh, never mind. Uh, put the mic up. Can you say that again? No, because I'm keeping track of the score, so I can make By it By the way, as soon as uh, this game with Jim is done, we'll be bringing in Jonathan Poole. So stay tight or sit tight. It's going to be awesome. We're going to get a great conversation with him. All right, moving in here. If you were to choose unfavorable weather, wow, we've got some going on right now, actually, outside, uh, for your next tournament round, unfavorable. It has to be unfavorable, but which one are you choosing? Heavy rain, 
heavy snow, and we describe both of these like this. Rain, it's hard to stay dry. Like, even with an umbrella, it's hard. Snow, it's accumulated on the ground, and it's continuing to. So, like, think of today. Or extremely windy. We're going to say 25 miles an hour plus, okay, with bigger gusts. So, windy round, rainy, or snow, don't answer yet. We're going to go to uh, Nick with this one, right? Yeah, yeah, Nick, you start us out. What does he say? I'm going to say wind. Unfavorable. He's choosing which weather, Ben? Uh, do, do, do. Sorry, I was thinking about things going on <laughs> the in the Expo. expo. <laughs> I'm going to go snow. I think he's going to say snow. He's from Massachusetts. That's not a big deal to him. And I personally, I, I hate the others a lot more. Josh. And Evan. All right, I'll take the final one. I'm on wind. I feel like that'll play well to an overhand, but it also could be Good extremely call. worse. So I, I don't know. Good call on that. 100% kryptonite of a thumber is Dang it. So unfavorable, you're asking. Are you that's choosing that? No, that's I'm what saying you want? that is my least yeah. favorite. I'm out of the running. So I'm that's your least way. favorite. Oh, so you're which one are you most choosing? Favorable? You're choosing oh, it would, out of those. It would be, it would be rain. Oh, he chooses rain. That would never Ooh, be rain. rain. So Josh never win. You throw a thumber this way. Very rarely that you can control it in the wind. Yeah. Uh, live, that was live, my worry. Right. Live interaction with the audience poll here. How many of you say you're choosing rain as your weather of choice out of those three? One person. How many? Okay, and Nick too. How many of you say you would choose snow out of all of those? You're like, that's the one I choose. And how many of you would say wind? Wow. It actually looks like snow actually won out. It was close with wind, but snow actually won out on that one. Um, all right, so yeah, we, we played all at the have vineyard. One. What was we that? We played at the vineyard a few years ago. It was torrential downpours where when you were throwing, your putter was getting knocked to the ground. Oh. I think after playing there, I was like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That no, makes sense. <laughs> um, I looked at one tech thing again. You've been doing great with your volume. Just get a little closer yeah. when you talk. That'd be great. I, we just want to make sure everyone hears you. Okay. Um, here we go. How many putts go in from Circle's Edge? Don't answer Don't yet, answer. but we give you <laughs> 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 we give you ten putters from Circle's Edge. Circle's Edge being uh, ten meters, and that's somewhere around thirty-three feet or something. So no, your Circle's Edge, no jump putts. Stand stills. You're not outside the circle. You're on the line. So we give you 10 putters. How many do you feel like are going to go in? It has been answering first. Well, he is thumber only. Thumber only putts is pretty, <laughs> pretty low success rate. I would say I'd give him five. I'd give him five. His rating was in the 800s. Is that correct? I forget. I think that's what he said. I have my own notes, but. Yeah, you took sure. notes. That's good. I know everything about Jim. Um. I feel like you're going to, is he a real honest guy? Like, as in, like, I'm get, he did that earlier with the distance. Like, I got to tell you my average. He's going to, you said five. We can, can we double up? We always could, or no, we can't. Yep. We got enough people here that we can double up. I feel like he's going to want to say more than this, but he, if he's being real honest, Jim, four. Ooh. I say, I <laughs> I'm say, like trying to persuade him. I say seven. <laughs> All, right. All right, this guy's won multiple tournaments, y'all. Uh, you don't win tournaments by missing putts. Yeah, an MP53. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's like a limited pool MP53 size. MP53 is no. not a division. Winning MP53. tournaments is winning tournaments. Uh, <laughs> I'm tempted to go eight, but I think I'm going to stick with seven. I hope I'm not underselling. Wow. I think I'm going to hit with Josh on six. I think that's a pretty happy number. I'm on seven. Ben's on. Now I'm on five. Now Jim, don't don't sway by who you want to win. Give us the answer if we ask you that straight up. Well, Here first I'm looking two. out to see who out here I played with. <laughs> Yeah, so to be honest. I've had I've had good days and bad days as we all have. Yes, yes. I would like to say I could hit at least half, but I would have to go with four. Oh, oh go go Matt. Matt. who nailed it, Matt? I called oh, it. The truth? I might have persuaded him to say that. I said, come on, be honest now. But wow. Circle's edge is hard. I I want to say that for the record. I was I was I was hyping my man Jim here. <laughs> but my goal uh, is to hit way seven. Off. But like Circle's Edge, if you're making seven, which I guess, that's a real good putter. So uh, <laughs> props to you for having an honest answer. Four out of ten, honestly, I think still pretty good from Circle's Edge. I think so too. Four out of ten from Circle's Edge is not a diss. I just think it was reality. And I so, guess So the goal with the thumber is the second shot to get as close to the basket as possible. So ten 
15 feet, I'm hitting, you know, pretty consistent, even 20. But going to circle's edge, I need to be close in the circle's edge. That's my goal when I'm throwing that second shot. Some good analysis. Okay, right so I have two points, and I think that's leading everybody right now. Um, we have two more questions, and then depending on if there needs to be a tiebreaker, we'll go there. If you were to get a disc golf tattoo, do you have any tattoos? Yes. You can answer. Yes, he does. Okay. Oh, can you give us a, do you feel like giving us insight? Like, no, no, about no, general, no, no. What is the tattoo? No tat insight. No? Okay. Nick doesn't want it. It's definitely the ta he, Tasmanian devil. You're already, already have jumping it on to him. it. Okay. He already <laughs> has he, it. I'm guessing he already has it on him. Here we go. Here we go. If you were to get a disc golf tattoo, which would it be? Single basket, uh, individual, just single basket, a doink putt. So it's one with the putter hitting the front rim. Is it a cartoon of a Tasmanian devil doing a 360 drive? Or is it a disc golf phrase? So it's more artistic in the phrase, grip it and rip it, or death putt, like that kind of style. So think about what kind of tattoo you would do for disc golf. This, this was a question I should have asked, though. It's, is it a disc golf tattoo that you have? Okay, all right. So it is tattoo, but I used to ask that question. It is moved over to Ben or me? Okay. Yeah, you. I answered the last one first. I said five. Well, he just answered four out of ten. <laughs> I think um, he smiled at Taz. But I, I have no idea if that's like he's smiling like that's entertaining yeah, that or out. that's what he would do. Um, I'm changing it up. I always do this today. Single basket. Going over to John. Uh, I already had single basket locked in, so I'm sticking with it. Yeah, I, I don't know if anyone's doing the stats on me, but the amount of times I pick single basket is, is high. Uh, so I'm going to stick with my plan of always answering single basket. <laughs> I'm going doink to putt. Doink. So Jim seems to me in that age group where he was in the 20s where everyone got a Tasmanian or Yosemite Sam tattoo. A Tasmanian devil on the left, Yosemite Sam on the right. And, you know, you're in that age group where it's possible. And so I'm going with, with the Tasmanian devil. And I think you actually have it. If, on you already. If he actually has it, the show will be sponsored. Like, this segment will be sponsored by Northeast Disc Golf Festival going forward. For the rest of yeah, time. Yeah, for the rest of time. We already know he doesn't have a disc yeah. golf tattoo. <laughs> no, but just no, Taz. If he has Taz, Taz, he has Taz, to be clear. So this is a lot on the line here. But, so I guess first question is, do you have either of those tattoos, Taz or Yosemite? Oh. oh, you're gonna have to pay up for that advertising going forward. <laughs> okay, and then so let's get to it. What basket do you or what basket? <laughs> I'm leading him on. <laughs> what what tattoo do you choose? It would be the basket. Single the basket. Single basket. All right, so Lord that gives me three it. points. Yeah, and then Josh and I get two total or up to two. Mm -hmm. All right, and we're gonna go here um as the last question unless it ends up being a tie and then we have a tiebreaker and the question is because we gave up the candy one we're going to go back to how do you view yourself in some ways but this was which band like musical band describes your most recent tournament performance bob do you know his most recent okay uh, live audience there so here's your options red hot chili peppers disturbed all out boy no doubt or Coldplay. Think about which one your most recent tournament performance. What would best describe that for these Yo, bands? You, At least, well, then, yeah. And if you don't remember your most recent, then whatever <laughs> you can't one. remember the tournament, which tells me something about your performance. Just pick one in your mind, then. Lock it in. You got one? All right. Yeah. Uh, Fallout Boy. <laughs> We're really picking on him today. All right. He won Welcome to the Jungle. Let me do some math here. That's in April, correct? Still in April? Uh, that was a long time ago. I don't know if you've won since then, but what I'm going for, I'm switching it up. It's cold out lately, and so your most recent tournaments, if it's been in this winter, have been cold, so cold play. I think he killed it his last tournament, no doubt. Yeah, I had the same. Did you play the pop-up course at the Expo yesterday or today? No. Okay, so I was going to go, I'll go Col uh, Coldplay. Uh, no, you played a tournament probably in like September. No doubt. You're on fire. I'm on no doubt as well. So it's a few of us. Uh, Jim, what do you got? Disturbed. Oh, that was my second choice. Disturbed. No one so, got that, right? That's correct. So that actually is going to wrap up this segment. I think I took it down accidentally, but <laughs> I did. 
Uh, Jim, we appreciate your time on the show. We hope you enjoyed it. Anything you want to shout out? Yeah, please. Um, some of you may have seen or been to the course, but Milford uh, worked on a course last couple of years with uh, Simon Lazat and Avery Jenkins, uh, Louisa Lake Disc Golf. Come out, check it out. It is a nine hole, ba- uh, nine hole double basket course. Um, it's great. Plays like an 18 and we are looking to expand it to an 18, uh, within the next four or five months. So definitely come check it out and, um, go team disc golf 978. Thank you, Jim. Awesome. Thank you. The Jim. course is very fun. Definitely check it out. Okay. Thank you, Jim. For our, for our post listening audience in New Zealand and Australia and Sweden and Estonia, make sure you check out this course. It's fantastic. I'm sure. It might cost a little bit to get over here, but we can do it. We, he'd be glad to host you on that. All right. Uh, moving on here. Let's go ahead and bring up Jonathan Poole. Uh, you can take the seat where Jim just was. We're going to have a conversation that is surrounding what he's really good at and whether he would be so bold as to say it for himself. I don't think that's the kind of person he is, but I'll do it for him. Uh, I visited with a couple of my boys, USDGC, thanks to Chad Sullivan's invite and JP. And really had a great experience down there this year, Jonathan. And, um, which by the way, that's where JP comes from everybody, Jonathan pool <laughs> and a fantastic event. It is a U.S. It is a major and it is a staple and often referred to as one of the most prestigious events. And some people actually prefer it in interviews that we've talked about that they'd prefer to win that in some ways over worlds. There might be a little bit of win to both. Um, but how long have you been running this event? And just let's start with that. How long have you been running this event? Every one of them. Uh, we, ran the, we ran the first one in 1999, so we just celebrated our 25th anniversary this past October. So it's a few. So you have some experience? A little bit. Okay. I'm figuring it out. <laughs> You're figuring it out. Um, I was down there, and uh, I was blown away by what did not translate over coverage over all the years, which was the size and the amenities of the venue. And I know you continually are looking towards what can improve the experience of the people coming. Is that part of your mission is to create the experience? Absolutely. We, we talked a little bit before the show about um, you know, the importance of casting a wider net and creating an experience that's uh, more meaningful or as meaningful as possible for the widest audience. And I know one thing that we noticed <clears throat> right after COVID was that the spectator base changed. It went from you know, predominantly guys uh, that, you know, probably golf together for the most part to a lot of families. Um, and so we've really leaned into music and food trucks and art and, and the spectator courses, plural, um, you know, to do things that, um, to just create a more, you know, fulfilling uh, experience and, and just more attractive to a, a broader group of people. And yesterday, uh, you and I talked for a little bit or two days ago, and we talked about the possibility of how big the event could get. And if you ever first saw being able to grow out of uh, Winthrop, how many people in this room have ever been down to Winthrop University? Okay, so, so some of you are about to, yeah, Simon, <laughs> that nice, Simon was out. Everybody says he's been there. Um, he's played pretty well there too. Uh, JP, this event, how many people showed up last year? A, a rough number, like, like spectators. 4,000. Do you think the possibility of hosting up to 10,000 is there minus the parking, like the venue itself could hold people or what's your limit? Absolutely. I mean, we, we're kind of limiting ticket sales at the moment to what we know it can comfortably park. It's obviously a different ball game when you get into shuttling people in, um, but that the venue could easily handle eight to 10, no doubt. That is massive because yesterday I was on uh, moderating a panel with Jeff Spring and he mentioned that there's no courses currently on tour that could handle 6,000. That may be true. Cause so parking, what's your limitation with parking? Uh, well, we, we actually just signed an agreement with the university <clears throat> to take over their nine hole ball golf course, which is all out there on that same uh, area. So that, that gives us a little more wiggle room. Um, I think we can get to 5,500, 6,000 without having to shuttle anybody in. We can, we can make that work. So uh, yeah, go I'll, ahead. I'll hop in for a second because I'm curious about the shuttling part. You see some uh, other events on the pro tour uh, level or majors do that. Um, is that something where you're, you want to add in shuttling once you outgrow parking or is that something that can kind of get added in along with parking? Like just kind of explain some of the, the shuttling aspects to the event in the short term. I mean, honestly, we're hoping to avoid shuttling for as long as possible. I mean, just the, the added cost of that and the added risk. I mean, you, you know, 
you have to be able to put people somewhere quickly. So if you shuttle people throughout a multi-hour period throughout the day, it's t- going to take you, you know, a number of hours to get them in. If all of a sudden you've got a weather event, you're not going to get them out as quickly as you might want to. So a lot of the equation is figuring out, okay, well, what happens if? How are we going to keep everybody safe? Um, and so that's kind of job, you know, job number one. Um, but, you know, the good thing about being on a university campus, we have uh, other athletic facilities nearby. I mean, we can, we can handle the parking. It's just a matter of, you know, we want to we get to the shuttling on down the road as far as we can. Is the, is the course itself, what is your expectation for course development? I know you've spoken before in interviews with us and other conversations that that's not really your directly involved with the like course design, but from a perspective of how you feel of the future of it, do you feel like it's, it is limited in being a pro caliber? I saw it personally. I don't feel that way, but I want to see your perspective and what you've heard. It's, you know, it's interesting. We have to find a balance between the tradition of it. You know, I mean, there haven't been other events that have been able, majors that have been able to stay in the same, you know, largely the same venue for, you know, for 25 years. And so, um, you know, we want to find that right balance between challenging today's top players, um, honoring our history and some of the iconic moments out there, not getting too far away from the traditional elements of it, but you know, one of the interesting things now that we have this golf course land is whether or not we might pivot. You know, there's been some talk about, well, maybe nine of the holes might wind up being on the golf course or using more of that and reducing some of the action out around the Coliseum uh, where you've got parking lots and roads and traffic and other distractions. So there's a lot to, there's a lot to consider there. Um, but, I mean, we've got a great team of designers, and so I feel like there's, um, you know, there's still a lot of great opportunity to, uh, to keep Winthrop relevant for years to come absolutely uh any yeah josh you have something yeah i've got some more broad level follow-ups um i've run some events in my life but i'm struck at the complexity right i mean we're talking about course design or parking or shuttles and plus the probably list of another thousand items uh when you started in 1999 did you have any background in event planning is this something that you were like primed and ready to, to go for or was it like starting something brand new I had run tournaments. Um, I had really no big event planning. Um, and looking back, I, I'm still surprised at how long it took to get to the level where we are. In hindsight, I'm very grateful that it took longer than I thought because if we'd have had five, 6,000 people show up early on. So, uh, but no, I mean, I've kind of I've learned on the fly and uh, surrounded myself with people with that kind of experience and, um, and just grown along the way. Well, so congrats on the success because it clearly is. And now 25 years in, you are an experienced event planner. Um, and, you know, in the live audience here in, in the room, and there may be others listening to the show as well. I know you were having conversations before, but there probably may be some people in here who have aspirations to accomplish the same types of things you've accomplished. Like what kind of advice might you offer? I realize that's like fairly vague, but just to consider, is it everything about like, believing you can do it or do they got to go get experience somewhere? Um, what might you advise somebody who's wanting to shake the sport of disc golf in 25 more years? Well, uh, I would probably speak to Ben on this, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, because first off, kudos for doing something that is overdue and truly meaningful for disc golf. So shout out to you. I'm uh, stoked to see your success. You know, thinking back, I don't know that I ever – did any one thing uh, that was amazing. I just didn't quit. Um, I, I understood the vision. So if there's a piece of advice there, it's know what it is that you want to build, um, you know, and, and understand why it matters. And, you know, you'll have a lot of people that you will surround yourself with who will contribute in some way. And everybody kind of gets a seat at the table and you build out your team. But somebody has yeah. to be clear on the vision, you know, and you've done that, um, you know, and I'm sure that you will continue to do that. Um, but I think it uh, it kind of starts there, and you know if you if you can see what it is you want to do, a lot of times it's just a matter of staying at it. You know, I mean, if if most people don't know exactly what they want to do, sometimes figuring that out is the hard part. But once you have the vision and you got any kind of motivation at all, you're probably going to figure it out. So uh, so be patient and just keep doing your thing. Thank you. So I have so many more like nitpicky type questions about USDGC, which I'm not going to ask here. Um, I have a plaque in my actual at work home office, which is the big like USDGC sign. And I'm on unrelated to disc golf work calls all the time. And they're like, what's that? What's that plaque? And I get to kind of, you know, evangelize the event. 
But just maybe before moving on, like, so given this big picture, there's lots of aspects to the event. I'm curious what you would say you're most proud of. I mean, you're 25 years in, and, uh, and I'm sure it's not even just you or it's, it's the team. But when you look at the event, what, what part are you most proud of um, that's happened? The family aspect of our staff. You know, I mean, the fact that we bring, you know, our staff averages about 150 people. Um, you know, we're one of the few events or, I mean, I don't know whether events have a staff like that. Um, but, you know, you can't, you can't do it without a lot of other great people who believe in the vision and they, they understand exactly what their, what their job is. And so it really is a, a family reunion of sorts. Um, but, you, you know, you think about anybody that's run a tournament, you know how hard it can be and sometimes how thankless it can be. Um, but I mean, the, the vibe that's in our office, our main staff headquarters, I mean, it is hugs and knuckle taps and high fives and stories. And, you know, just the fact that, that it's a huge collection of people from all over the country that are proud of this thing that we have done. Um, you know, that's just, we couldn't have done it without them. And that's just, it's easy to do it. You know, it's easy to do it when you got all your, you know, all your people around you and everybody gets it. And it's just a big celebration of kind of leveling up each year. Thanks. Yeah. My takeaway there is obviously the catalyst is the event, but it's more about the overall leadership and culture that's really um, inspiring. And I've experienced that in avenues as well. So thanks for sharing that. I don't know if there's other questions. I got two little quick ones, kind of double part questions. So we are going to see USCGC at Winthrop for the foreseeable future. That's the plan. All uh, right. We've got at least two more on the contract that we're on, and that may change with this golf course because now we have an ability to put a pay-to-play out there, a pro shop. You know, we really can kind of breathe more life into that property and have disc golf be at Winthrop more of a destination year-round. So uh, at least two, and, and certainly for the foreseeable future. You were talking earlier about how running this major, and it's pretty much stayed in the same place the whole time. It's not planning on moving. We have a major that finally solidified where the world championships are even going across the pond now. So this is kind of like our masters. We can compare it to that. When are we going to get the jackets as a trophy? Ooh, great question. Uh, again, with the tradition, you know, I mean, I feel like the, the jacket for us is the ring. Yeah, um, the, and, the ring's the great. Ring's and it's, you know, it's like Ken Climo back in the day. He's like, well, you know, the money's, the money's nice and the visibility and all that. But, man, I want to win that ring. Yeah. And, uh, and he's, got, he's got one for uh, each finger, at least on one hand. Yep. Um, but that's, and it's, you know, you don't see that that much. So, I mean, even with the ring presentation, you know, we make the champions wait a full year. You know, you get, you get paid on the spot um, and you get all the accolades and all that, but it isn't until the opening ceremony of the following year that you actually get your champion's ring and are kind of welcomed into that. So um, I guess we could switch it up and get to a jacket, but again, you're kind of do parting both. with what's yeah. been no, special you, for so both. long. Just, just add the jacket into it, you know? But anyways, that's it. What that's color it. should <laughs> See, I'm a big fan. I know green is in golf, so we don't want to exactly copy them. What's that? Baby blue. That's my uh, vote. You know, I, I would go something blue. That's my favorite. Baby color, blue. Though, but I would do something Light blue. blue. Do you remember it? Go back. Disc golf pro tour ch champion winner points winner. The what shiny, was that? The shiny silver Their jacket. jacket was awful though. So let's <laughs> let's not do that. But see, but see, that's also a risk that he would run. Someone saying the jackets are awful. But um, I think I had so many conversations this week, and I apologize if this wasn't with you, but I think it's relevant either way about maybe like rolling out things slower as opposed to just like an idea and boom, it happens. Uh, what's your wisdom on that? Because someone in here that wants to start an event, it's going to take 25 years possibly to get where you're at. So like slowly rolling out things and ideas, is that your wisdom with that? Or I think so. I mean, a lot of that comes down, you know, to the people that you have. I mean, we've, we've done our best to not add new things unless we thought we could do it really, really well. You know, I mean, we have, uh, you know, a reputation and a standard, you know, there's an expectation that things will run uh, smoothly. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll add something if we feel like we can for sure uh, do it at a level that we believe our fans and the competitors expect. Absolutely. Ben, you have any questions for him? Yeah, I do have one question. Go ahead. Um, I guess what's your favorite part about running it all? It's probably the favorite question people ask me running this. So what's your favorite part about running the event and everything that has to go into it? It's my first answer is probably one that nobody would, would guess. Yes. Even if you have been there, you might not guess it. But, um, you know, this has been a, a fundraiser for the educational disc golf experience pretty much since the beginning. And um, 
it's pretty awesome. And we've, we've moved, you know, some years more than a thousand kids. We brought them out into the village. We've taught them disc golf. We've walked them out to the course and they've had a chance to cheer their, their heroes on. Um, but seeing kids get it for the first time, you kind of, we create a spectacle and you create opportunities for this little crack of light to pop in and give people an idea of what is possible, of what can be done. And um, if you look closely, when the kids come out, you see that, that twinkle and that, and that spark. And just hearing them, uh, you know, hearing them cheer and just knowing that you're, you know, there's a bigger purpose for what we're all doing. Absolutely. And that was my experience down there. First time experience for me, but hearing the cheering of the kids throughout the event's performance and not even related to specifically Simon or Paul or somebody hitting a big putt, but their own experience of learning and playing disc golf. Very, very awesome to see the buses roll in on that. Um, anything that we missed on talking points that you think would be beneficial for everyone here to hear um, or just anything that you want to talk about in general before we let you go? Wow. Well, I mean, for those of you who have been to the USGGC or who have watched it and uh, supported it in any way, thank you very much for that. Um, it's very much a we thing, you know. I mean, you know, I, I talked earlier about, uh, you know, we've we've had a lot of success simply by asking people to fill in the blank. Man, it would be cool if we've asked that of players, we've asked that of fans, uh, we've asked that of our staff members, we asked sponsors to fill in the blank, and. Um, you know, that's a big part of it. So it's a, you know, the USDGC is a 25 year effort to make all of our dreams come true. Um, we all wanted this once upon a time and, and now it's just, this is what the journey has produced. And so, um, you know, I certainly welcome and value your feedback of all, you know, of all kinds. So, I mean, I would encourage you to, you know, to reach out to me directly or any member, member of our team, if you have uh, advice or criticism, you know, we listen and we do our best to, uh, to take everything into consideration and, um, you know, and create change. And, you know, another thing I really wanted to share to Ben, cause I think you're probably going to feel it. Um, this is sort of the flip side. This is not something that you probably would have expected to hear, but if you've run tournaments, you, you probably can relate to this, but, um, you know, he talked about all the teetering and the energy and just, you don't realize how up you get until it's gone. Like right now, the, right now, the volume for Ben is cranked all the way up. And then it's like, this is awesome and this is great. And there's the big lines and all the energy. Um, but I mean, you know, in the, in the days and sometimes weeks right after a big event like that, when you come back down to normal, normal can feel lower than it did on the front side of it because it's just hard to really, uh, you know, take into consideration just how, how, how up you got. So a touch of the blues is completely normal and it's all right. And it's usually an indication that you just kicked a whole lot of butt. Um, but so there's some advice there that like for whatever you're doing, do your best to not get too, uh, too high or too low. Just try and stay right in the middle. Um, take a moment to sit down and take it all in and look around. Um, but yeah, just kind of, I like to guard people against that. I mean, even if you're not the leader and you're just kind of caught up in the whirlwind, you might come out of it being like, oh man, now it's quiet. And I just got to roll up all these banners and put stuff away. And that could be kind of a lonely, <laughs> yeah. a lonely place, but it's part of, it's part of the job and it passes. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of our live in-person audience, first time ever, that is Jonathan Poole. Best, best of the best in the business is running majors. We we're so happy that you joined us. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, I don't want to put them on the spot, but wink if you're willing to join. Okay, Simon Lazat, everybody. He's going to come up and join in for this next segment, which is presented by, not officially, but Stat Mando, Evan Kearns. He's going to bring Satter Fiction for us today, I think. A stat game I, of sorts. No, it's right. I didn't know Simon was joining in. Well, surprise. One of the questions is about Simon. So we'll see if he can answer it. Okay, we'll see. Let's see how smart he is. He plays well. Let's see what he knows about this, the game of disc golf. And trivia. now the room's about to multiply. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone come in. <laughs> Simon, test your mic out. Say hi. How are check, you check, check. Okay, good. Thank you. All right, Simon Lazat. Uh, first of all, this is your first time to the expo. Pretty cool. Really cool. Yesterday was madness. Um, <laughs> I went to the limits of my social energy, and uh, today was nice and smooth. I'm sure some of the vendors would have liked to see more people today, but I was kind of glad that it was. 
little quiet out there and just easy and saying hi and having actual like conversation with people, not having to give everyone like two seconds and then have to move on to the next. I think I like because Stagger Stands has a booth too, and I think I talked to like thirty five people, and I was like, "Boy, am I tired!" <laughs> so I was like, "Yeah, yeah. thirty five people." <laughs> And and I wasn't here yesterday, but I was seeing the videos and the line to see Simon was like wrapping down his uh, MVP's aisle to then go around the corner and then went down all the down that aisle. And it was like out the door. Like, Ben, you took a video of it. Like how many people were in line to see Simon? Um, well, it was at least four hours straight of a huge line of at least 100. I'd say 100. People. Four hours straight of a long line. A, if it, it's on, it's on our Instagram, the Simon line. If you want to check I, it out, yeah, I mean, oh, I, the I, Simon I, line, yeah, that's what the, <laughs> the, the, the I Simon never line. Of that play on words. He's got the Simon line and the Simon. Yeah, and I would say, like, I mean, Simon, I think the fact that you do it uh, indicates you already understand this, but the value to the fans, the fact that you're meeting people, it is exhausting. It is work from your standpoint. Um, I'm sure you get some sense of fulfillment, but I just know, like, there's so many people who are standing in the line. So thank you for doing that uh, from the fans because, uh, you know, at the limits of your social energy can be a hard place to be, but you stuck it out. Yeah, just shout out to Ben for being the local guy who makes this happen. Like, I live literally 25 minutes from here, so it couldn't be more perfect. I'm sad I missed last year, the first one, but to see what it's already grown into is pretty mind-blowing, and I know he already has bigger and better plans for the future. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Sam, for coming. I mean, that... Huge line out the doors. Part I don't want to take any credit for part that. Part of that was because of <laughs> really you. So I appreciate that. Well, it was, it was the collective of everyone, but I'm just saying, I'm sure a lot of people were like, okay, Simon's going. I'm going to go now. I yeah, I, it's been actually pretty cool, broadly, like speaking to observe. Of course, a lot of people are here because there's an amazing amount of vendors. People can buy merchandise, some exclusive stuff. So we've seen that. But it's also fun. Uh, most of us in disc golf recognize there's a community aspect to it and how many people have come through to like see people and it's the human interaction that's really valuable at an expo because almost everything here could be bought online. There may have been a few exceptions, but, um, but meeting the people can't be. So everything from other YouTube channels to uh, owners of companies, uh, startups, people have been a long time. Um, it's, it's other professionals, right? We're talking about Simon because he's here, but it's, it's awesome to see. It's been really, really great. Yeah, I think that's the great part about disc golf and what makes our sport so incredible is you are meeting people who, you know, in basketball, you're not meeting LeBron James or Michael Jordan and you're not hanging out and having a five minute conversation with them. But fortunately, we've had the pleasure of having Simon, Paul McBeth, Big Germ, Jeremy Coling from Innova. They've all been up here. And how many of you guys can say you've been having a conversation with them? You got to take a picture with them and actually say, hey, man, how are you? Like, I'm really happy you're here rather than just, you know, Oh, let me get a quick selfie and then run away right after that. It's especially on a Sunday like today. So shout out to disc golf and shout out to the pros who were able to make yeah, that happen. I, the, I was, I was being interviewed by disc golf world. Jefferson, he's back there um, yesterday. And that's one of the things I mentioned is like, it's just the coolest thing. Like, you know, diamonds, he's an, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a human just like us all. But here everyone's like, Oh my goodness. Like it, it's like this grand thing. And it's just the passion and, that the that the uh, audience and the attendees give to talk to him, and they're so just thrilled to talk to him, and it's just like this incredible thing that people can come to the expo with a bunch of people that love the same thing and just nerd out and just embrace each other. It's 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 incredible. And Don't sell yourself short. They come to see intern Ben too. And they're pretty yes, excited. Sir. They Simon, are pretty you excited. ready to play a game? Yeah, what's the game? Evan's got it. He's playing it all out. Right. It's been all uh, day work. This is certainly has. Uh, this is stat or fiction. Uh, uh, if you're fans of the show, Simon knows what the game is. Uh, just raise a hand just so I can gauge how do people do not. Well, actually, that's going to be you're going to raise your hand if you know. Raise your hand if you know what stat or fiction is and how the game works. OK, uh, less than half. So I'll explain it uh, thoroughly, but also uh, live viewers. They must know. Yes. So, and we're definitely I, letting everybody play along by like raise of hands just as a general consensus. This will be certainly. Fun. So I'll be giving some uh, stat uh, trivia uh, questions, and I will phrase it as if it's true. Uh, and then the game is you got to figure out if that stat I gave is indeed a stat, it is true, or it is fiction, as it's fake and made up and it's wrong in some way. It might have some part truths, uh, but it's wrong overall. Part. That's the worst part. So 
Uh, I'll say something like uh, Nick Carl is higher rated than Matt Graham. You would either say stat. That is true. Wait, or, in disc golf or something else? Uh, in disc okay. golf. Yes. Thank you. Uh, or fiction as that is not true. And, and what we'll do for everyone in the audience, if you think it's a stat, raise your hand. So if you think Nick Carl is higher rated than Matt Graham in disc golf, raise your hand. To everyone's hands that are down, please raise your hand. There's a few that are down, but most are up. (laughs) Nick Carl is indeed rated higher than Matt Graham. That's not a slight on Matt. There was a a time. There was a time where it was nine years ago. I don't know. I don't know. We can go back and look. (laughs) All right. So let's get into it. Uh, the very first question, well, all these questions are going to be about uh, some of the great celebrities that have uh, been here at the expo. So the first one's about Jeremy Colling. Uh, Jeremy Colling's first elite series win was at Maple Hill. So that is the, the, the uh, statement. You want to tell me if that is indeed true. It is a Can stat. Can we get pull from the audience to help us or not yet? No, no I don't think so, because there are people, okay. uh, including on this row, who are going to be very confident about answers. Um, maybe on this His row, I don't want to speak here. for anyone. I, I'll start this off. <laughs> so if you think if you think Jeremy Colling, his first Elite Series win was at Maple Hill, you're going to say it's stat. But if you think he won somewhere else first, or if you think he didn't win any Elite Series events, which I'll leave that to you to believe that or not, uh, you would say that is fiction. I'm going with stat. Over to Josh. Ah. Uh. I know it's his favorite place, or at least one of. I'm sure he's got a few. And uh, for that reason, I'm going to say stat. <laughs> oh, you're not answering. Yeah. I forgot. <laughs> yeah. Wait, 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 I'm like wait, waiting wait. on Evan's Matt, answer. I'm you like, threw it Evan. to me, but when does <laughs> yeah. Simon oh, answer? Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Si- Simon. Yeah, your turn. Oh, how confident are you? Are you going to, you 100%? Uh, funny, I actually recently rewatched him winning Maple Hill. Okay. Ooh. And I remembered being obviously super special to him, but there was some twist in there that I thought he might have won something like just before <laughs> that as well. I'm going to go with stat, but I'm not confident. Uh, yeah, I'm going, I'm going fish, fiction. He won Waco before. That's a guess. It didn't even exi- uh, exist then. Just quiet, Simon. It's <laughs> too late. No, he can say it now. We're going. We're going. We're going. We're going. We're going. Quiet down, Nick, because we're going to the audience now. Uh, audience. audience, if you think it is a stat, raise your hand. If you're leaving your hand down, it means you think it's fiction. So you have to choose one or the other. No, we'll say if it's a stat, raise your hand. Too. Okay. And if and it's we'll a fi- if you think it's a fiction, raise your hand. Everyone, yeah. Oh, <laughs> man, I like all you guys. overwhelmingly, I, I think there's two hands up for uh, for stat, and the rest, uh, a good number of people here are for fiction. What did Ben say again? Uh, fiction. Okay. I didn't really. Hear so the it question. was Memorial. You're saying? I think it was. Well, well, how about I say the answer? How, how, about, you say, how about you say? How about you say? All right. Uh, this is a stat. Yes. Yes. Ding, 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 ding. Yes. <laughs> Jeremy Colling won the 2014 Maple Hill Open. Uh, and then the following year, he did win the 2015 Memorial. You had that right, Nick, but that was after his Maple Hill win. Uh, he won USDGC in 2016, uh, his major victory. And then he won Waco in 2017 and 2018, uh, Ben. Uh, Waco actually has been an event uh, in the past, but not on the Pro Tour or an Elite Series. Who, level. I, I just realized that. Who in this room was there for Jeremy's win at Maple Hill? Anybody? Okay, a couple of us, three. So I wasn't quite sure, but I felt it. The rest of the room, you voted. Okay, good. Let's go. Yeah. All right. There's a lot of a lot of people, a lot of audience, and a lot of people on this panel. So Nick, did Nick remember? persuade everybody in here to vote fiction? Sorry. Yeah, I think he did. Sorry. <laughs> okay. I That's thought right. it was 15 and 16, yeah, not Simon 14, 15. One. Simon with and one, Matt with one, and Josh with one. Yes. Great. And a couple, a couple of the audience members, you know who you are. Yeah. All track. right, let's go on to number two. Uh, Will Schustrick, also in the house, uh, has four major wins. Three of them at USDGC. That is that is true. I'm giving a lead in to the stat or fiction. Will Schustrick's other major win was at the 2012 Japan Open. I want you to tell me if that is a stat or if it is fiction. He has won a fourth major. He has won three at USDGC. Stat or fiction is his other major was at the 2012 Japan Open. Calling Will Schustrick to the stand. <laughs> Will Schustrick. All right. Um, I'll, I'll I started a- last time 
But again, if Simon's too confident, it throws everybody like to vote that way. Do you feel really confident before you answer? No. Okay. So <laughs> as long as you don't have that confidence, you can go first. Oh, you can't. Not, he, yeah, you can't say that. You just got to roll. No, it. I mean, if he's like, I know the answer, well, it throws everybody. Yeah. No matter what, Simon should say he's not confident. Yeah. Even true. if he's hundred percent right. sure. True. Just for the true. sake of the game. Simon, what do you think? What is it? True stat. Before he said Japan Open, I thought Japan Open. But then there's these European majors even early on back then that he, I know he was at a lot of them. I don't know if he ever won one of those, though. I'm going to say stat again. Yeah, I mean, simply because I can't think of another major that he won and you planted the idea of Japan Open, I'm saying stat as well. <laughs> I'm going to go fiction. I got to get some points on the board. That's not how or it less works. Steve Falco. And she, yeah, he hasn't competed Bad since. Years, um, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to go fiction because I believe it is a European one, not Japan. That was thanks to Simon's input right there, right? Well, no, but Simon that, went Japan. No, so. no, yeah. I know, but he mentioned these other ones. No, I, I, no, I knew <laughs> that it was probably going to be a European one All right. in my head. I am going so to default to that because I have no idea, and I just feel like that's a good one. All right. Now to the audience, who raise your hand if you think this is a stat. Maybe half. Maybe All right. Half. Now raise your hand if you think it is a fiction. Yeah, it's about half. I, half. I think it's about 50-50. And is that what our panel, what we said on the show? No, I think I was 50, the only 50. one that's said oh, fiction. Okay. Or no, no, Ben, you ben did you say fiction? fiction. So, so both 50, of us yeah. are 50-50. Yeah. Right. Two, two out of five. No, we're uh, right. We're right. If, they we're get, right. Two, if they get points, then we're all tied. I know. It's Ooh. true. The answer is... Fiction. Oh, it's going to be European, isn't it? Ben, you were on it. Because I, if, if people remember the episode that we had Will Schustick on, uh, I think it was right before USDGC or right after, um, we were talking about this. And I think, Ben, you were watching coverage of this event. Yeah. And we talked about it. And you knew exactly what it was. And I was impressed. <laughs> uh, it was the 2012 so. Stockholm Disc Golf Open okay. in Sweden. Uh, he won that one. Um, I, don't, I don't know the exact years the Japan Open had. Will Schustick did not even play the Japan Open in 2012. Not that that's common knowledge, but just to uh, explain <laughs> it further, uh, he has not won the Japan Open, but did play it in 2010 and 2014. I remember that. So we all have one point yep. on yeah, stage. Point. Who has one point out there? Does anyone have two points? Oh. Nigel! Oh. One. Audience member, that's Nigel. You know Nigel. Him, ben? He is leading everyone in this room. Let's keep uh, going. As we go into number three, which was planned before I knew who was going to be uh, on this uh, panel. He doesn't know uh, his own stats, do you? We'll see. Simon Lazat, he, he's in the house, by the way, so another celebrity uh, here at the Expo. Uh, Simon Lazat's best round rating in his career was an 11-10 round rating at the Jonesboro Open. This is the best disc golf pro tour rated round of all time. Can you repeat that? Because I was that, just that, stunned for a second. Yes. All of that is up for grabs. This is fiction. all up for grabs, okay. yes. All right. Um, no lead-in one on this one. Simon Lazat's best round rating was at an, was best round rating was an 11-10 rated round at the Jonesboro Open, which is the best disc golf pro tour round rating of all time. Specifically pro for tour. the disc Specifically golf pro tour. Specifically for the disc golf pro tour and not all of the PDGA you or all of the You said that was his series. highest rated round? His highest rated round. Oh, 11 10. Yeah. His okay. 11 10 at the Jonesboro Open. My brain which is was the saying 1000 10. That's why this I was golf confused. pro tour round rating of all time. And I will say, I'm going to have Simon go last on this. Yeah. Whether he knows it or not, we'll go to the audience before. Um, okay. Have you gone first yet? I uh, know. It's my turn. Um, this is a game, and I feel like Evan put like five facts. Yep. Don't elaborate. One stat or fiction. Don't elaborate. No, I'm just saying. So I am saying. That is fiction. Fiction. Yeah, I'm going to have to go with fiction. It wasn't Jonesboro. Fiction. Yeah, yeah, All right, to the audience. Uh, anyone want to go stat? Hey. Oh, we got a couple. All right, nice. Not, a, not a, a blowout in either direction. Now raise your hand if you think it is fiction. Mr. Lazar, uh, what do you think it is? How, oh, many, yeah, he just how, his hand. how many do you think Simon can throw an 11-10 rated round? <laughs> yeah, Once in my life, yeah. at oh, least. he did do it. You did it. I'm pretty sure that I threw that round, and it was is the highest rated round in Pro Tour history. I think those are true, but I think the Jonesboro is wrong. But that is the correct part. The Jonesboro is the incorrect part. What? 
That, I, just, so, I just told Matt that'd be so lame. And look at that's what true. I that's why I chose it. I, I've, I've done this before plenty of times. I wanted to throw the, the best round rating uh, I think of all Mario time in there. Off 16 mic down and found nails. Yeah. Yeah. Off the mic, Ben right. goes, that would be so lame if he did I, that. I think I've also had this as a stat or fiction before, but I, I want to get a question about Simon. I always feel like this is a good one because uh, I want to throw in the best rounding, round rating of all time because. I feel like it should be well known and might not be as common knowledge to everyone as it is. Uh, people know generally the best PDGA round rating of all time, which was Paul McBess uh, at 2013 Memorial, 1132. You knew it better than I do, I think. Um, so we have to have a tiebreaker. Um, Wait, a tiebreaker? I, I have two points. I have two because points. Because we have a lot of people with two we points. Actually, audience member Nigel is up at no, three. Oh, Nigel. If that's the so, end of it. That's the end of it. I can. We can I, give it to Nigel. Let's give it to Nigel. All right, give it up for Nigel, right. everybody. Yeah, Nigel. Woo. I don't know what that exactly means, but swing by the booth before you leave. We'll figure something out. That's cool. That's very Get cool. a candy bar. We'll buy, we'll buy you a Simon disc. Yes. All right. Um, because this isn't a Simon panel, he already did that. You can be done if you'd like to, or you can still stay up here, but we're going to let people ask live questions. Okay, cool. Thank yeah. you, Simon. Simon Lazard, everybody. Also, didn't James Comrade just shoot like 17 down at Jonesboro and that wasn't even 11 10 rated? So yeah. that's what sold it. No. Well, so oh, Simon. Too? They ended up being. Okay. All right. That sounds right. Uh, Simon does have a very high round rating at Jonesboro uh, just in 2022. Uh, it was 1093. So I saw that come up and I'm like, ah, people might think Jonesboro, but it's something no one. Well, very few. Thank you, Evan, for bringing that stat portion of this uh, this segment. It's fantastic. See you later, guys. What I would like to do is, and the, there may be zero questions out here, but if there's any questions that you have for the show, and it can be any category of, what's your opinion on this hot take? That's fair game. It could be, what, what's the deal with the show? It could be any open question here. If you have one, uh, ask it. We'll replay it on the microphone here. So, um, Or, yeah, we don't have one to hand up there. Okay, we'll restate it. So, listening audience, sorry, for like. Okay, we got to restate the question. So, the question is specifically to Ben because we're here at the Northeast Expo and they want to know if you've got plans to move the event around or is it always going to be in this beautiful hotel? Um, so. Uh, in this venue, I'm not sure, but it's going to stay in the Northeast, in probably Massachusetts. If it keeps going well and er everything works out, it's going to stay here. And that's the plan. This golf's too small, in my opinion, to make like, do one in New Hampshire the next month. And then it just, so I think I'm just going to keep one in the Northeast and just do it big and do it big and better. Yep. Oh, got it. Yeah, pro probably not just because everything's so, Mass is pretty centrally located and just the whole, the biggest part of people coming is like they know the location and like, okay, this is where it's at every year. So I'm, I, I'm most, it's going to be in Massachusetts most likely. And fortunately enough, there's like five states connected to Mass within, within an hour at least. But I do hopefully plan on Doing a second expo in another state, not in New England, <clears throat> somewhere else. That's that's my goal. Um, because I don't know. I think I think disc golf needs it, and I think I can bring something special to people in a whole another demographic. And this, thank you for the question. This is true with most people who aren't ready to officially announce anything, but he has a lot more up there than he's saying. I'll tell you that much. He's doing fantastic. Uh, any other questions for the show or hot takes on disc golf in general that you'd like us to react to? If not, we'll bring up one or two here, but anybody? Any, any opinion questions? All right, so the question from the audience. What are our favorite snacks? Are, are we talking like... Um, are we talking candy disc golf or rounds? like, can I consider pizza a snack? <laughs> are, are we talking okay. on talking the course... Candy. On the course snacks, like during a movie, like what regular kind of, snacks? Just okay. Here right. we go. So candy. Uh, it's sour patch watermelons. Oh, I mean, like I this uh, this is hard. 
I'm a salty person, honestly. So pota- just like potato chips would do it, but Reese's Pieces would be the candy of choice. Uh, it, side, side note, it's it, it's Reese's Pieces. But everyone <laughs> says Reese's Pieces. Hey, we've had this on the I've, show before. Wait, we've wait, done did this I say on it the right show wrong. before. You said it wrong, but everybody says it wrong, or everyone I know. I, I just always pieces. find it funny, and I'm, I'm not going to correct I've got myself. a different standard uh, stance I, on that. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I, so, someone has, uh, said go. on the course, and I, I want to quickly say on the course, I love granola bars. Like That's, that's my snack. But uh, either around the house or watching a movie, like I might go to like Cheez-Its um, or like chips and salsa, which I think is still a snack, right? Yes, it's not a yes, movie yes, it's a snack. as much, but like oh. chips and salsa, there's so much to go with that. When you said during a movie, it changes for me. Like on the course, it's definitely like jerky or something. Um, but in a movie, I'm probably going like the nachos with the cheese dip or salsa, jalapenos combined. Like I love that. Yeah. There you go. Anybody else? We're getting ready to close it out, but we wanted to open up if anybody else. Oh, did you not answer your Since snack? we're correcting people, it's not jalapenos. Jalapeno. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, Ben. Jalapeno. Ben, let's hear it. Let's Thank hear you, it. Ben. Uh, uh, you're half Puerto Rican, if I'm correct? Yes. Is, are jalapeno. Uh, oh jalapeno. Goodness. I just said jalapeno. it wrong. Jalapeno. I just said it wrong. It's, uh, it's the enye on top of the N. And the, the H has a J. Or, or the J has an H. We got it. We got it. All right. <laughs> I, what is your favorite snack? Pickles. During a movie. <laughs> I'm getting a call that I got to take real quick. Bag of pickles. Okay. So as the expo implodes, Ben has to run. <laughs> um, any other question as we get ready to close out? Any hot takes? Anybody wants to react to anything? I will argue with you for the next 30 seconds. <laughs> okay, here we go. We're going to, um, the question is, where can you buy Staggered Stance swag? This is one of one, and I was wearing a one of one yesterday. They were just purely prototypes to see what we could do. The short answer is, very soon you'll be able to access that. We'll announce it on the show. Um, we are very happily um, partnered up with Disc Golf 978 to present each of our episodes. And we will be running, I believe, our, all of our apparel and uh, swag through them. So you'll be able to order it. They'll ship it out as soon as it's done. It's it's really a good thing for us, and I think we'd appreciate your support with that for sure. Ooh, I like right, so, that. All right, so here's the question. Um, is what is our dream interview for this show from outside the disc golf industry? And did that have to be alive? So... Probably to interview them. <laughs> okay. For the history of our show, we've had three or four like this. One was Andrew Zimmern, Celebrity Chef. That's in disc golf a little bit. He's a disc golfer. Um, Dylan Cease is in disc golf, but he's a Major League Baseball pitcher. And so, and I probably missed miss a few others. But as far as most recently, now Nick and I actually argued on this pretty hard the other day, live. You can go listen to this. I think J.J. Watt would be an amazing interview as a sports athlete, and he just demonstrated that he played a round, he played a round of disc golf, and I thought there would be enough just to talk to him. So, J.J. Watt. Does anyone else have one yeah, off the top I, of their like, head? I, I, I really got to There's think obviously, it. like, so yeah. many, and um, I'm from New England, and so maybe it's default, but I would love to interview Tom Brady, and not just because, like, of what he's accomplished in the NFL, Obviously, all those things would be great, but I'm just intrigued about how he thinks about sports and performance and his approach to the game and study. And like, I would love to dig into that in a, in a discussion. Um, so I think that'd be quite intriguing. Uh, Tom Brady's a really good one. I can't argue with that uh, really at all. Um, one that comes to mind, you mentioned J.J. Watt, and I, I agree with J.J. Watt just because a little bit disc golf, even though he's outside disc golf, you want a little bit of disc golf to talk about it. Uh, one that I would go to, which is more regional to New England, but kind of same level-ish of J.J. Watt, is Teddy Bruschi of the Patriots. Uh, I believe he's Innova sponsored. He, yeah. He, even when he's on ESPN, he has, uh, like, I think, a, you know, Innova disc or uh, something from disc golf behind At the very him. least, a line and, with Innova in some way. Yeah, yeah and, and I'm correct that a couple years back, Simon played around with him at Borderland. Borderland. Yep. so he, he's done a few things in disc golf, but, like, I, I, like, I like to say it as, like, players that my – people that my mom would know are good people to have. And my mom knows who Teddy Bruschi is not a big sports fan. Uh, you know, <laughs> doesn't really, uh, 
understand. Who in this room knows who Teddy Bruschi is? Any, okay, good. All yeah, right. she, she would know immediately who that winner. is. Yeah. She would know who Tom Brady is as well and, and okay. knows plenty of other people outside sports. What was that? Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, boy, nice. And, and winning yeah. a Super Bowl would just be a fantastic interview like to see people. Yeah, and he just seems like a great guy. I mean, I know he does, he does like charity things and all that. So it's like he, he, not only is he like an athlete you look up to, but he's like, I think he's a really quality human. Um, I think trying to really hammer it down. I mean, there are a ton of actors and actresses who I'd love to interview just to get to know them. Is our interview musicians? Yeah, musicians. I mean, like Billy Joel would obviously be someone who I'd love to just sit well, across. I thought the you were going to say Taylor Swift. <laughs> no, but I think I think if I was actually to talk to someone in somewhat in the sports world, um, I think Joe Rogan would be an incredible interview because I think he's insightful about everything that you talk about, and I think it would be cool to have a conversation of what his thoughts are on disc golf in general. Um, for me, I had to mull it over a bit, but I'm born on December 7th. And so is this legend, Larry Bird. Um, I think that would be, I've always been a huge fan of him. I've read his book drive and ever since reading that his mindset between motivation and, and all that, how the hick from French lick became a star is just really inspiring to me. And I'd love to just like interview that like mindset of how, Every day he just got up and, and grinded his face off. So I'd love to get, get to more, know more about that. And I'll, I'll just wrap up the inside of that is like someone who has a golf mind would be really interesting. And so I'd go to any of the best golfers, Tiger Woods, Jack Nick, all That's those. That's a good point. Because I, I'm interested in that mindset that it takes the golf. And this golf shares a little bit of that for sure. So that would be my last follow-up to J.J. Watt in the big golf scene. All right, unless there's any last pressing question, we're going to wrap it up. So anybody in here is like, hey, I want more, one more. And I don't expect it, but I just wanted to make sure we gave you the opportunity. We've got exciting things coming uh, for Staggered Stance. Um, we have, we're hopefully going to be rolling out soon a revamp of the game Pop Drop Lock, which for those who I remember. I met the guy here. Yes. The, we- or the website. That I looked at. The well, guy we is in the room. We actually haven't announced that yet. So oh, anybody. I, the camera's. Sorry. The camera's here. I, oh. I have been looking straight past him. We, we are working the with. I met the guy. The, the guys in the room. We are working <laughs> with a web. A web <laughs> app developer. To make it so that everyone can play along with us on a weekly basis. The game that we've been playing. Which. If you remember it from last year, it's actually extremely fun. Nobody else is doing it until they see this video and they're like, we're going to go do it. It's just picking players who are going to play above average for their normal performance. And we pick who is that going to be? And it can be anybody on the registered list of players. Like you just pick and say, I think they're going to play higher than their average. And the goal is to find who does that the most. Um, And so every week you can pick a, a player that's not usually picked for anything, but it's fun. And then we do it. Who's going to underperform on their average performance? So for the year, they're averaging 20th, and we think they're going to go 45th. You pick that player for that's that fall-off player. Um, and again, you, it, it's the strategy to this. And then you're going to pick who do you think is going to be a lock pick. They're going to perform really well, whether it's a win or at least top 10 somewhere in that range. You pick your lock. And we're going to make this interactive so during our show, everyone can play along and get their picks in on it. And it'll be a really fun time for all of us. Well, See who can Since be. he's here, can we like can we shout him out and like maybe Get, show his face? Do you have? Or? Let me just ask. Do you have a? Oh, he'll come up. Give yeah, us, give us, the, gonna give him some give kudos. Us, well, I don't know how he wants to be referred to as sir or web designer, web app, like company man. Here, come up here, come up here, Shrek. Dave, Dave Shrek, come up here, take the Shrek? microphone. All right. Yes, we're gonna give you the closeout here That's to awesome. tell us um, your excitement for working in disc golf and what do you have plans for this game to be for everybody? Yeah. I mean, I, I remember, uh, it all started, I guess when Matt was like, Hey, if anyone wants to do this, like send us a message on Instagram. So I was like, Oh, they probably already have some. He was just messing. So I, I messaged him and it was when it was still Nick and Matt and it was just their Instagram. And so I messaged them and I was like, Oh, I'll do it. And he was like, really? And so I, I got to Zoom with Matt. And I remember before we met, I couldn't tell if it was Nick or Matt. because they, they never <laughs> said when I messaged him. I was like, Matt or Nick? So when, so when I finally Zoomed, I was like, who's going to show up? Is oh, that's funny. Nick or is it going to be Matt? And I saw it was Matt. We talked for a little bit. And he was disappointed. I was like, oh, I was hoping for Nick. No, uh, so we got to talking. And then we were like, hey, can we actually get this done? Uh, so we're hoping to have it done for the first week at least. If not, 
you know, we'll, we're going to play the game regardless, we'll but play, we're yeah. hopefully going to make this tool available for interaction. Yeah. Yeah. And the idea is that hopefully everyone would see what everyone's picking and we don't have to go back in the show. Evan doesn't have to keep track of everyone's <laughs> picks. And That's text, awesome. text me your picks. And then yeah. uh, we're hoping maybe in the future we could do giveaways. Like if you, if you got the high score for the week, you do giveaway. Or uh, if you had the high score for the whole season, maybe we could do some other giveaway or something like that. Yeah, that'd be awesome. And if there's any tech glitches and that's why you lost, now you know who to blame. That's true. <laughs> that's true. That's not right. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming on, Dave. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Thank appreciate, appreciate it. Thanks it. for swinging in. All right. We're going to close it out. Um, this was a special episode. Um, that being said, we still like to give a shout out to our usual episode presenting sponsor, Disc Golf 978. For all they do, check them out there. Use code WELOVE978. You can visit them right out there and uh, get hooked up with whatever you need in disc golf. And we just want to shout out all of you guys here in the live audience. Thank you for coming out and making this an extra special experience for us, especially for Ben. I know with the expo in general, and then all the other vendors who are here. Thank you guys for pairing the weather and coming out uh, to all of our live broadcast listeners and on all of your favorite podcast platforms. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget to like comment, subscribe, tell someone you love them this week. We'll catch you on the next one. That's right. And guys, if you thought this was long in person, come to our regular show. It's a half hour long. All right, Josh, you're awesome. Evan, you're awesome. Nick, you're awesome. Ben, way to go. You're awesome. Oh boy. Peace out, everybody. Peace.